Hey, welcome back everybody. Happy Friday evening. Hopefully we had a wonderful day out there and hopefully getting ready for what is looking to be a much nicer weekend than maybe uh, we've seen uh, throughout much of this week as Debbie finally exits the picture here uh, and moves off towards the North Atlantic. So again, we had a, a lot to talk about with Debbie and unfortunately that is going to be a trend that continues here with the tropics as uh, we now have potential Ernesto trying to form uh, into portions of the Atlantic and that could bring impacts to land uh, in fact, I will go ahead and say we'll very likely bring impacts to land. It's a matter of where uh, exactly will we see those impacts. So I'm going to give you the latest on that in today's video. Now, this entire video will be focused on the tropics. So if you're a regular looking for that more continental United States forecast, come back tomorrow morning. Uh, or if you want to also watch this, that would be greatly appreciated as well. Uh, but this is going to be something I try out on the channel a little bit. Morning videos will be a little bit of everything. Evening videos will be just kind of focused on the tropics. Uh, this time of year while things are very active. Now, if you're new here, uh, definitely subscribe, like the video and comment. Let me know where you're watching from and also let me know what impacts you saw with Debbie uh, if you were impacted by it and if you weren't, then uh, just kind of let me know what you've seen over the past couple of days. Um, also, we've seen some incredible growth on the channel uh, and with everyone new, I will go ahead and reintroduce myself once more. So welcome, my name is Gerald. I am a meteorology major at the University of North Carolina, Charlotte. Uh, I'm going into my junior year uh, of that uh, uh, program here. So again, uh, exciting times for me. And, uh, you know, I'm very excited to kind of continue uh, working towards this career. Uh, and uh, this is a great platform to do it on. And I uh, really just, again, appreciate all you folks coming out uh, and uh, hanging out with me this evening to talk about some weather. So uh, with all that said, let's go ahead and get on into that forecast. Because again, things are looking quite active out there for a lot of folks. So uh, satellite imagery over the northern Atlantic here. Uh, again, we've got a couple areas we're watching. Uh, the big one, again, circled right here. This is just an open wave right now, but very likely to become Ernesto uh, within the next uh, couple of days, especially going into this coming week. And because of that, the NHC has already designated it as an area uh, of uh, some potential development. So we'll definitely watch out for that. Uh, and that, again, is going to be a big focus on this video, but not to overshadow Debbie, which, again, uh, is, uh, you know, finally working on out of here. Now, we're not really going to talk about Debbie in today's video. Uh, but again, we talked about that in this morning's video. And honestly, by the time you're watching this, uh, not many impacts will be left from Debbie besides some rain moving on through the Northeast. So uh, that is the good news there. Other than that, we do have some showers and storms out here towards the um, Caribbean, uh, which was a former wave that we were watching for potential development. Good news is chances uh, have dropped to basically zero for that one. So uh, again, we will take uh, any breaks we can get. And again, uh, all eyes on Ernesto, which will likely be its own problem here on down the road. Now, latest from the National Hurricane Center, uh, by the time you're watching this, if you're watching this kind of after 7, 8 o'clock tonight, we'll have an updated map on this that could uh, have this uh, yellow area to a red, but either way, that's not going to affect anything else I talk about in this video. Uh, but right now, a more likely than not chance that uh, this does develop into Ernesto is what the expert, excuse me, what the experts in Miami are saying, uh, with a 60% chance of development within the next seven days. So um, again, definitely uh, something that we're going to continue to watch here. Uh, and the NHC is watching very closely as well. Uh, the good news, though, that is the only player on the field currently now going on down the road that will probably change. And I'll show you that here later on and why that is. Um, but um, again, uh, latest here from the experts. So uh, we will watch out for that. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you some model guidance for Ernesto. The first thing I'm going to start with is just overall atmospheric conditions for the storm uh, upon general development time frame. Then we'll look at some of the long range models, look at some ensemble members. Uh, and then talk about uh, some more long-range tropic forecasting here, and uh, then let you go. So, latest here uh, from the GFS model in terms of uh, overall uh, moisture in the atmosphere. Again, hurricanes they want a moist core. They want a uh, you know surrounding area that has plenty of moisture they can use up. In fact, uh, with Debbie this past week, we saw what dry air can do to a system and kind of keeping it from strengthening. Um, but uh, this storm, again, or what will be a storm with uh, Ernesto here, looks to have pretty favorable uh, atmospheric conditions going into early next week. This is this coming Monday going into Tuesday. Circled area on your map, that is, again, what will be Ernesto. And there is some dry air to the north in this model uh, and many other models. But all things considered, it's nice. Uh, it's got its own nice little pocket here of moisture to work with uh, and will likely continue to have that as it develops into a storm going into, again, the early part of this coming week as it tries to work into the Northern Caribbean or just north of there, uh, north of the islands here. Now, wind shear wise, again, that'll be another part of the forecast we need to monitor here. Uh, it looks to be relatively calm, all things considered. In fact, I'm gonna use a different map because this one gets a little bit messy. So we'll use uh, our 200 millibar uh, height anomaly map here. 
Uh, and again, hurricanes or tropical systems in general, they do not like wind shear over the core of the system. Now, if there's wind shear helping to fan out the storm, then that can be helpful. And that does look to kind of be the case here with, again, future uh, possible Ernesto here. So at the upper levels of the atmosphere, uh, we are getting some wind that is helping to kind of potentially push some of these outer bands outward, uh, which uh, would be, you know, useful to the storm. Again, it likes to um, you know, you have that uh, rising motion at the center. So whenever you get wind that's kind of spreading out above the system, uh, that creates uh, more lift at the surface and allows these storms to form, which again, looks to be the case here going into uh, early this coming week, uh, which again will help this storm, you know, begin to strengthen. So uh, atmospheric conditions, again, should become more primed up going into the beginning of this week um, that is coming up. And again, the storm already, I say storm, I keep saying storm, the open wave currently, um, you know, already looks pretty healthy on satellite as I showed you. So uh, likely just going to continue to become more healthy uh, as we go into the coming days. And that unfortunately could spell impacts here uh, for portions of uh, the islands here from the Antilles up towards uh, even Bermuda or, and the Bahamas. So we will continue to watch that. Now, uh, latest from the GFS operational run, this shows vorticity at the surface and our uh, steering currents here at the mid-levels of the atmosphere. So again, these kind of areas that you're seeing uh, are vorticity towards the surface, but the really important one is right here uh, moving towards the Antilles. Again, this is Monday into Tuesday. You'll notice a strengthening uh, area of spin at the surface. Now, uh, all these other lines you see are also important, uh, specifically uh, these kind of, uh, I guess, purplish looking lines. These are our 500 millibar uh, height contours, which uh, tell us kind of uh, how the steering patterns are working here. But uh, I'll move this ahead. Again, you'll notice a strengthening storm over the northern Antilles uh, Monday into Tuesday. That looks pretty likely to bring some showers and storms. Now, exactly how strong the storm is is still up for debate, but I would expect at least a tropical storm probably, um, you know, going into that time frame. Now, after that, the storm here on the GFS continues to develop and get stronger, although moving just south of uh, Puerto Rico here going from Tuesday into Wednesday uh, would still bring impacts to the island in terms of rainfall, some gusty winds, and probably some flooding, uh, but doesn't look like a major storm at that point in time. Now, next stop for the storm would be, uh, it looks like uh, Hispaniola on this run of the GFS. Again, this would be Wednesday into Thursday of next week. Um, and uh, again, you can also see the time at the top right hand corner of your screen there uh, shows uh, the time that the model is run for. Now, after that, the storm looks to get into the southwest Atlantic near Bermuda, and uh, this point on is where the forecast gets tricky. Everything I just showed you, uh, we feel pretty confident in with, uh, again, what would be Ernesto. From this point on, the steering currents are a little bit different in our models, uh, and thus are bringing slightly different outcomes here uh, that we would need to uh, monitor here. But overall speaking, uh, again, up to this point, we feel pretty confident. Now, after that with the GFS. Uh, the GFS kind of moves us through the islands of uh, the Bahamas here, continues to strengthen it, and by the time we're about a week from now, has a pretty uh, strong tropical system off the east coast of Florida. Uh, again, this would be a tropical storm or a hurricane, very likely, and then eventually rises up the southeast coastline uh, and brings a strong uh, storm, probably a hurricane towards major hurricane status, into eastern North Carolina seven to ten days from now. Um, kind of starting the week of the 19th of August. So, um, you know, it's uh, <laughs> not something you want to see if you're in that part of the country. You know, we just had Debbie move through and uh, again, brought crazy flooding, a lot of tornadoes and even some wind damage. Uh, this unfortunately would do the same, but uh, again, it's very far out. So this is the point where that we're confident to. Again, about seven days from now, that NHC cone I showed you, or not a cone, but the area of potential development, we feel confident in that. But you notice that the southeast or the Gulf of Mexico wasn't in that because, again, that's so far out that we don't really know. But uh, that is the latest with the GFS, again, within the short frame. Again, it moves that into the Outer Banks of North Carolina uh, and then kind of up the eastern seaboard in the long run. Now, the European model has a very similar kind of start to the storm, maybe a little bit further here. But this is Monday into Tuesday. Again, a strengthening area of uh, vorticity at the surface. And uh, then, again, bringing that through the northern Antilles. And then eventually into Puerto Rico, again Tuesday into Wednesday, as probably a tropical storm on this run. Now, it could be a little stronger than that. It could be a little weaker than that. Obviously, we'll uh, just have to kind of wait to see here. But nonetheless, a uh, an impactful storm moving through Puerto Rico. And then this time, instead of the GFS, which was moving into the south coast of Hispaniola, the European is a little bit north of Hispaniola. So, again, would bring different impacts to you folks down there, depending on exact track. 
Um, but then same general idea, seven days or so from now, this is more like six days, but we've got a strengthening system, tropical storm to hurricane status somewhere near the southern or the southeastern Bahamas here. Uh, and then this is where the steering currents, uh, steering currents, excuse me, get interesting. So um, on most of our models, we have high pressure here. Uh, again, kind of the Bermuda high, as we call it, uh, that would want to push the storm again towards the United States. But at the same time, you'll notice to the north, uh, we've got a trough digging down uh, that wants to pull the storm north. So uh, all indications are that that will happen. The storm will pull north. Now, the question is, where does it pull north? And that's going to be uh, very reliant on where that trough is, how strong that trough is. Same story for the high pressure. Again, the GFS I just showed you brings us all the way through the Bahamas and then up the East Coast uh, because that trough is a little bit later to pull the storm up uh, and then we get a track like that. Now, the European model is different, pulls the storm up much quicker uh, and gets this kind of into the Bermuda Triangle, if you will, here uh, in the seven to 10 day time frame. Uh, and moves this, you know, in that region. Now, after that, it gets a little interesting. In fact, I'll move this northward uh, towards the, I'll just zoom out for you so you can see it a little bit better. And again, I know this is uh, hard to see, but this is uh, 10 days out on the European model. This is our storm. Uh, and you'll notice while it's pulling north, it's not pulling super far east. And I'll show you why that is in just a second. But again, we've got a storm uh, is pretty strong, not far from the northeast coastline about 10 days from now. So uh, different than the GFS, and the main reason we're seeing these differences all comes back to those steering currents. Same problems that we had with Debbie with forecasting um, that we're going to see with uh, Ernesto here in the medium run while we figure things out. But again, the storm looks a little bit less likely to stall than uh, at least uh, Debbie did. So that's the good news here. Uh, but again, a long way to go, so we're going to have to really figure things out. So this is going into early next week. Notice these are, again, the steering currents or our height anomalies at about 500 millibars or about halfway up into the atmosphere uh, in terms of basically where the particles are from gravity. Again, don't need to get super into the science, but uh, here we go. Bermuda high, uh, that's one steering factor. A trough here into the northeast. In fact, let me draw it a little bit better here because this is really the trough and our trough axis. Um, again, uh, all here at the same place. So, um, or excuse me, these are the players on the field is what I'm trying to say. So, uh, at this time, we're going to have a storm probably in this general area. Now, watch what happens with all these steering currents, uh, and then I'll redraw where the storm would be at this time frame. So we get this into Tuesday and Wednesday, and uh, the GFS and its ensemble members, again, would have the storm kind of about right here. Uh, you'll notice the Bermuda High getting shifted eastbound at this trough coming down to pick up the storm, uh, and uh, that's something we feel pretty confident in. Now, what happens after that is a big question mark. Now, the storm, again, likely to get picked up by that trough, but you'll notice um, a couple of question marks. Now, the first question mark is how strong is the trough and where does it get picked up? Now, the operational GFS run, again, pick this up closer to Florida and the East Coast. Uh, the European and its operational run, pick this up further out to sea. Um, but what happens next could also be its own caveat. So, um, you're thinking, well, the good news is with the European is, you know, it's out to see it gets picked up, probably won't bring any impacts to the lower 48. Well, not so fast. Now, not to say that that's not what will happen, but uh, we get this, you know, further out into the long run here. Um, and then we get high pressure kind of rebuilding, but this time to the north and towards uh, the uh, Bermuda High region as well. So this could even pull it north and then try to push it back towards the United States. Now, not to say that that is what will happen, but it is a distinct possibility that we'll want to watch for here. Uh, and we can see that in some of our ensembles as well. Take a look at the latest European ensembles from this afternoon. Uh, and I'm just going to show you now through 144 hours out, we're about six days here. Uh, again, models are pretty confident we're going to have a storm somewhere near the southern Bahamas uh, in about six days. And again, uh, the track is pretty confident up to that point. I'll even show you the GFS and its ensemble members for that same time frame. Here you go. Uh, again, shows the same general idea, maybe a little bit slower with the storm. Uh, but uh, again, you know, you get the point here. Forecast is pretty confident up to that point uh, with track. Now, after that, that's where things get a little bit more difficult. So if we loop this out, these are the European and its ensemble members. You'll notice here we go. They all start, uh, start to pull north here. Um, but uh, we've got a pretty big spread in how far out they are. And then you'll also notice at the end here, some of them try to curve the storm back towards the United States as that uh, upper level ridging kind of builds in. So, um, you know, it's going to be tough here. But uh, one thing that we do note nonetheless with just about all of these members is uh, we are seeing uh, um, uh, signs of strengthening. So whenever this does get into that Bermuda Triangle area, uh, conditions should be favorable for this to develop into a hurricane, potentially a strong hurricane, 
And again, you'll even see uh, the range of possibilities on where this gets pulled north is pretty far. And then even again, some kind of pull this back up towards the northeast, some pull it out to sea, uh, some pull it into Atlantic Canada. Now from that point on, just a lot more questions and answers, uh, but that's definitely something we can figure out over the coming days. GFS and its ensemble members, again, same general idea. Um, you'll notice most of the members do pull this out to sea quicker than the operational run showed. Again, the operational run had it riding up the East Coast and into North Carolina. Some of these members do show that, but most of them, uh, again, pull this further out to sea up north. Uh, but uh, then again, at the same time, you'll notice that might not necessarily be the end of it. Some of these members do even try to curve it back towards the United States. So um, it kind of reminds me a little bit of Hurricane Lee, uh, if you remember kind of that forecast we had last year. Not to say that this will be another Hurricane Lee, strength-wise or track-wise, but uh, it's the same in the sense that the models, you know, are just going to need some time. The storm's a little too far out to know exactly what's going to happen, uh, and we're just going to have to continue to watch things. But one thing I can tell you for sure is the Atlantic is ready. Uh, we've got uh, very warm uh, uh, kind of ocean content temperatures here. Uh, and these are in Celsius. I know most of you are probably more familiar with Fahrenheit, but just know any color that gets to yellow uh, to kind of orange is favorable for tropical development. Any kind of color that is red is very favorable for kind of explosive tropical development. And yeah, where we have those pinks, that's kind of off the charts here uh, in terms of ability to kind of fuel these storms. So the Gulf of Mexico, uh, a lot of potential here, you know, <laughs> within the rest of August. So whether Ernesto here um, you know, is, uh, is a problem for anybody. That does not mean that uh, the season is over. Again, a look at all that heat content in the Gulf of Mexico. We could see uh, we could see a pretty big time storm if something gets out there here between now, September, or October, which uh, fortunately is a, a very long way to go. And again, really anything that gets anywhere in the Atlantic here that would be anywhere close to the United States, uh, it's going to need to be watched very closely. Uh, another reason we're going to need to watch this is the latest uh, global tropics hazard outlook from uh, NOAA here uh, has uh, a couple areas of development potential. Now, week two, valid through the middle of August. You'll notice kind of where we're going to be watching Ernesto uh, has, uh, you know, a pretty high probability of tropical development. And really, uh, even anywhere in the Atlantic or the Gulf of Mexico should be watched for that potential. And by the time we get out to towards the end of August, again, really the entire Atlantic basin here is getting lit up with these colors for potential tropical development. So, uh, it's going to be it's going to be a wild ride here again. And if you're watching in maybe you know Houston, Texas, saying well none of the models are showing anything for me right now, don't let your guard down because again, uh, anytime this month we could see that uptick and even going beyond that. A reminder: uh, the peak of hurricane season is until kind of the second week of September, and we're only getting into the second week of August. So still an entire month away from peak season, and the models don't even run out that long, at least not the global models. Um, so. Uh, you know, we got plenty of time to go. And right now, activity wise, this is similar to what we would see towards the end of October. So, um, you know, we've uh, we've got we've got a ways to go. So just don't let your guard down. And again, know that we've got um, we got a lot we're going to monitor here. So Ernesto, the big story right now, Debbie luckily pulling out. And after that, again, needing to watch for an uptick in even more tropical activity uh, over the coming weeks and throughout all of August and probably even really the rest of hurricane season. So again, I'll keep it, uh, I'll keep, uh, both eyes on it for you and keep you updated here in the long run. So y'all have a great rest of your Friday night. Enjoy it. And I'll see you all tomorrow.